morning trendsetters. Just thought I'd set off on a uh, morning walk. Obviously missed the turning here. Try and get the, uh, the 5K in before it rains up above. Got a little bit of uh, moisture in the air, but I think it's because I'm walking through a cloud and uh, not so much from rain. The ground's dry, but uh, if I start getting a bit more wet, I might have to cut this one short. It's uh, 7.30 and I've just gone past a daycare centre that's full of kids on a Saturday. Unbelievable. So those of you that are new to the channel, I'm Vietnam Steve, I'm living my best life uh, between Australia and Vietnam and uh, what I wanted to talk to you today about was um, one of the biggest fears of new retirees as they move into retirement and that is um, how they're going to fill their days and have a meaningful retirement. So one of the biggest fears that new retirees uh, concern their brain about is what are they going to do in retirement? They can't just sit on the couch and, and uh, watch TV all day. It's even more uh, critical for those people that have been working in a, in a full-time job before they retire and then move to full-time stay-at-home retirement. That's a real shock to the system. So one of the things I wanted to talk to you today about was how you can fill out that week with meaningful activities, uh, hobbies, work, family, um, anything that takes your interest, passion pursuits, and um, make sure that you are making the most of your freedom years. The aroma here is just uh, sensational. That's because um, we've got a pretty big flower market here. And uh, let's see if I can find something interesting for you to, uh, to actually have a look at. In Vietnam at uh, the Lunar New Year, people um, spend their time decorating their house and actually taking branches of peach trees essentially to um, to their relatives as a gift for the new year and what always amazes me is that even some of those little plants that we walked past earlier they have fruit on them they must spend the whole year uh, organizing them and flowering trees are just uh, one of the most beautiful things uh, so manual workers, uh, you know, maybe hanging for that break for their body where they don't have to uh, come home physically exhausted every day. Um, and so that's what they may be hoping to achieve when they get to their freedom years. But then again, there's the office workers that um, are probably looking to have some more self-directed time uh, and not be under the the time constraints of the man. And so everybody has um, different expectations in the um, uh, retirement years. And so everybody's uh, time's gonna be a, a little bit different. So regardless of whether you're a, you know, a manual worker looking to save your body from physical exhaustion or an office worker hoping to get some self-directed time back, everybody can benefit from having a structured uh, or a less than unstructured uh, program in their retirement. So um, let me know in the comments what you plan to do in your retirement and how you're going to fill each day 
Um, like and subscribe the video here because that's the only way I know that uh, I'm producing content that's meaningful to you. And of course, um, if you've got ideas for new VARTs that I could make uh, and topics that you'd like to hear about, please also put them in the comments. I'd love to hear what it is you'd like to know. Before I come back to you and, and go on with the story, um, just across the road here, we've got um, branches of peach trees. And these are the things that um, they stick in the front of shops or they take them to houses. And uh, they're all just starting to flower now. So it's very, very nice. Um, they're in buckets. People come and pick these up on a, on a motorbike and take them home. And uh, very, very beautiful. So wasting time in retirement is not something that um, should be taken lightly. I believe life is for living and being productive. And of course it could be 30 plus uh, years. So don't let another day go by without thinking about what it is that's going to, to interest you when you have seven free days a week and then set about a plan of um, getting that activity underway today. So what I like to do is divide my weekly calendar into 21 uh, blocks of time that I have each week. And that's really just three per day. So um, I don't overcook the calendar efficiency, um, but I do make sure that uh, for every morning, afternoon and evening, I've got something structured in there that's going to guide me through the day. Uh, a reason for getting out of bed and getting moving every day and also a reason to uh, keep progressing forward on those passion projects that I've got um, and keeping active because again if we go back to where I started, uh, inactivity in retirement empirically leads us to be uh, more sedentary and um, at old age creeps up a lot faster. So let's talk about these three uh, calendar blocks each day. Uh, my first block really goes from when I wake up each morning, that's usually about 5, 5.30, uh, through till 11.30, so it's a long block. Um, but what I do when I wake up is, um, clean my teeth obviously, um, go for a walk. So I walk five kilometres every day. That's what I'm doing today. It's not a, an odd thing I'm out walking today. It's an everyday thing. It takes me about an hour, uh, probably an hour and a half by the time I, I frig around because I walk, walk for an hour. And then um, I come home, have a shower and um, turn the computer on. Uh, while the computer's starting, I usually get myself a, a coffee. I'm a coffee person in the morning. And then the rest of the morning is taken up with um, any emails or uh, uh, matters that I need to attend to. So I still do some part-time work. I'm on a number of boards and committees and they uh, often send me, send me things to consider and provide insight on. And all of that's done uh, in the morning. Um, I've also got time in the morning there to uh, either wash the floors, uh, check the mail out the front, um, get the dishes done and uh, you know once a week put on a load of washing so it's uh, some minor chores that don't take much of my time clearing out emails I only look at email for an hour a day and then uh, dealing with any uh, paid stuff that needs to be dealt with but I do have a, a hard stop at 11 30 so by 11 30 every weekday my um, morning calendar block is, is completed. So I do that, you know, five weekdays a week. So of the 21 uh, available slots I've got, five are, are taken care of, and that's uh, uh, self-care, walking, um, minor household tasks that don't take time. Um, they're, they're done by machines. It's just load things and unload things. And of course, um, 
any paid engagements that are seeking um, you know, special insight from Vietnam Steve. So um, by 11.30 every day, I'm pretty hungry because I don't eat breakfast. Um, I do follow a, a, a two meals a day regime and I find that works for me um, with walking in the morning, uh, no food before 11.30 and taking that fasting break from sort of uh, 7 p.m. through till 11.30 uh, each day. So 11.30 is an interesting time of the day because it's not just uh, eating rubbish. One of the things that I uh, continue to do in addition to uh, walking for self-care is make sure that I, I'm really only eating fresh food. So um, meal processed by mouth is a good, is a good, uh, a good way to live. So 11.30, I'm cooking a full lunch uh, every day. This might involve uh, frying up a piece of meat. Uh, it might involve uh, cooking a soup. Uh, but suffice to say, it's not a, a, not a small period of time. It probably takes you about an hour to prepare the meal and eat the meal. Um, and that really sustains my body then through to uh, the rest of the day. Um, after lunch, uh, clean up the kitchen, clean up the dishes. And I generally go and take a nap. You now you might think taking a nap is a an old person's thing, but um, I'm here to tell you that in Southeast Asia here in Vietnam, they have like a Mexican siesta. And so every day from 12.30 till 1.30, people are taking a nap. Um, I'm probably taking a nap from about 12.15 through to 1.45 because I don't have a employment, I'm in retirement. And so, um, that really refreshes me. So the, uh, the lunch break is a full lunch break, a couple of hours um, out of the day to deal with lunch and a nap. And coming back fully refreshed um, by 2pm. By 2 so the next block of the day, and I'm talking about weekdays here, we'll deal with the weekend uh, shortly, uh, is sort of the, the 2 till 6 slot. What are we doing from 2 till 6? Well, basically, um, you know, at two till about four, I'm really looking at um, relaxing pursuits. So I, I may be uh, reading a book. I may be uh, having to go out of the house and do some chores, uh, post offices, uh, shops, uh, etc. But that sort of uh, early afternoon time from two till four is really where I um, get life's mundane tasks uh, undertaken. I like to sit down uh, in front of the TV. I know that sounds uh, a bit sedentary for uh, for you. I like to sit down in front of the TV uh, from four till five. And the reason for that is that a lot of the people that I deal with in the workspace really love calling late in the day. And it was quite frustrating when I was trying to, uh, you know, clip a hedge or uh, replant some, some vegetables and have the phone ringing. So, I've outsmarted uh, everybody, including family members, and I basically sit in front of the TV from uh, four to five each afternoon. I catch up on the day's news. I watch a little bit of YouTube uh, to do that. I don't actually watch free-to-air TV. And um, I wait for the phone to ring. And as people ring about this, that, and the other, um, I'm able to give them my full attention. I pause, the, pause whatever I'm watching. Anybody that needs a phone call back gets their phone call back between four and five in the afternoon. So. Two to four is uh, life's mundane tasks. Four to five is um, helping people with uh, all their problems that they call me with. And then um, you know, start thinking about what it is that's, that's gonna happen for dinner. I usually like to, uh, to start cooking the dinner about 5.30 and generally eat by about 6.30. It's a similar process to lunch, no processed food, have something healthy. However, um, I do have four adult kids and two teenage daughters that live with us. And quite often, um, the evening may well be uh, at one of their houses. And so that will determine what's happening at 5.30 with regards to cooking. But um, by 5.30, six o'clock every day, that's 10 slots of the week taken care of, of my 21. And there's only 11 left to go. So that's sleeping. Uh afternoon rest time in Vietnam is a very interesting thing because you'll find that uh, um, shops close at this time 
banks, cafes, uh, all sorts of things. And uh, everybody has a sleep. I've actually seen people sleeping in the cafe. The, uh, the cafe owner um, pulls the blinds down and everybody has a kip on the chairs or on the floors or on the tables. So this house across the road from the bay here is a good friend of mine's house. Uh, she smashed that up last year and uh, I have to say uh, she's got a cracking view here out into Harlong Bay. Um, if you need to go to a bank between uh, sort of 11.30 and 1.30, uh, you're going to be out of luck uh, in Vietnam. So look, if you're liking this new style of content, uh, please let me know in the comments. There's capacity to uh, comment down below. There's also capacity to uh, shoot me an email. If you've got any questions about life and uh, what I'm doing and how things are going, shoot me an email. I love to get emails from, uh, from viewers and my email is uh, down below as well. And there's even uh, capacity to buy me a coffee down below. So if you want to buy me a coffee, there's a link for that as well. So um, really value the support and uh, I love seeing how many views each piece of content gets and um, how I can improve the next one. So quite often in life uh, we get those time stealers, those people that want to um, catch up for lunch or uh, <coughs> have a meeting or talk about this or some new uh, investment opportunity and so um, you'd be happy to know what I do is I I slot them into uh, my Monday evening slots so pretty much anybody that wants to um, get a little bit of Steve get a bit of the Steve the Vietnam Steve experience um, gets invited to uh, an Indian restaurant on Monday evening so I try and have uh, Indian night Monday night and anybody wants uh, a little piece of Vietnam Steve, we can meet at an Indian restaurant, split a curry and uh, chat to our heart's content. So that fills out uh, one of the five week evening slots. Um, as I said earlier, those darling kids of mine invite me over a um, uh, couple of nights a week. So let's say that's taken out Tuesday and Thursday uh, evening. Um, Wednesday evening or any evening where I've got uh, nothing really on my agenda i try to either um think about of an idea for a for a youtube uh write uh some of the uh, ideas that i might have about a particular topic or research those ideas and then um get a bit of a an outline as to what i want to talk about in in a video so that could happen on uh on wednesday night and then uh Friday, which is the other the other night I have to myself, um, is usually spent editing. So uh, Friday night is edit night. Everybody's busy with their own families. Everybody has something to do on Friday night. And so uh, so for me, from sort of um, six till nine or 9.30, it's, uh, it's editing time. Uh, for all those weeknights, uh, bedtime, uh, for all you late stopouts is about uh, 9.30, 10 o'clock and I sleep very well through till 5 a.m. So that's filled out 15 of my 21 slots. I'll continue straight on now with the uh, with the weekends. So people often say to Steve, what do you do on the weekend? You know, what do you got on on the weekend? And I know, I'm sure people say that to you as well. Um, and I'd love to hear what you've got on uh, on the weekend. But for me, um, I like to keep my weekends free. So I've got... Uh, couple of families they always want to do things and I'm really keen to uh, always answer in the affirmative when they want to do stuff so uh, if somebody says let's go and uh, kick a ball or let's go and uh, have a beer or eat some lunch um, I'm relaxed about that I've got the time I can say sure meet you in uh, 15 or 20 minutes so those weekends are kept free for um, family type activities separate to that I maintain a property that needs uh, the garden mowed every second week and the vegetable patch tended to uh, in a similar time frame. So probably half a day each weekend is on um, home maintenance 
and getting th things done around the house. So you can pretty much say that those six slots on the weekend are one third home maintenance and household duties. Uh, one third would be um, going out on people's uh, errands, requests, demands and uh, objectives uh, where people invite me to do stuff. And the other third is really rest because uh, at the end of the day, it's not about filling every waking minute to be efficient. It's about doing what you do best and what you like best. So at the end of the day, I don't mind having a couple of slots free on the weekend to just um, relax and reflect. Um, that's filled out my 21 slots. I hope that's helpful to you about how you might plan your life as you move into retirement. And of course, I'm moving into retirement here in Vietnam. And I have to say, with that kind of calendar efficiency, um, I find that I'm not, not actually wasting any time. So once again, thanks for watching. Comment, like, subscribe, and uh, stay frosty. This is Vietnam Steve. I'll see you in the next one. This is the, uh, the post office getting sorted. Everybody's grabbing their packages and then uh, off we go for deliveries.